Bobcats. In this video, we're going to take a look at how you convert from one concentration unit to another, such as you're given a concentration in molarity and you're asked to find a concentration in molality. This process is not hard, but it is very tedious. You have to be super careful with all of your units, and not just the units, but whether the unit is referring to solute, solvent, or the entire solution. So these problems are absolutely accessible. They are things that everybody can do, but you have to take them slowly and you need to be very, very careful with all the details as we do these calculations. Our objective is to perform calculations with molarity, molality, mass percent, and mole fraction as concentrations. With these concentration conversion problems, you'll be given the concentration of a solution in one set of units, such as molarity, and asked to find the concentration in a different set, such as molality or mole fraction. Very often, the density of the solution will be given as well, because we will use the density to figure out the relationship between the volume of the whole solution and the mass of the whole solution. Now, the problem solving approach we're going to use here is to assume a fixed amount of stuff to work with. What that fixed amount is, what units, and what the stuff is depends so much on the information that you are given in the problem. But once you pick this amount, every calculation you do after that assumes that's the amount that you have to work with. So when you're given the information about the concentration in one unit and then also the density, we're going to ignore the density for the moment and focus on the other thing you were given, such as the molarity or the molality or the mass percent. What I need for you to do is look at the formula for the unit that you're given and look closely at its denominator. If it's molarity, the denominator is per liter of solution. So pick one liter of solution to work with. If you're given molality, the denominator is kilograms of solvent. So pick one kilogram of solvent to work with and then work all of the rest of the calculations from there. If it's mass percent, the denominator is grams of solution. And since it's a percent, the easy number to work with is 100 grams. Once you've picked your fixed amount, do all the rest of the calculations based on this number. Sometimes when you're faced with one of these concentration conversion problems, you can just immediately see, oh, well, if I have this concentration and I pick 100 grams of solution, then I can calculate this followed by this and boom, I have my answer. But sometimes you look at these problems and it's just like, I just don't even see where to begin. If you're in that situation, set up a three to one table. You are going to make a table where you have three masses, two moles, and one volume. The three masses are the masses of your solute, your solvent, and your solution. The two moles are the moles of solute and solvent. And then the one volume is the volume of the solution. Typically, if once you pick your easy amount to work with and you fill it into this table, you can see something else that you can calculate. Like if you have the mass of the solvent, you can use the molar mass to find moles of solvent. And once you start doing that, you, you kind of get on a roll to figure out all of these numbers. And once you have all of these numbers filled in, you can calculate any concentration unit in a pretty straightforward manner. Let's do an example. We have an 8 mass percent aqueous solution of ammonia with a, excuse me, with a density of 0.9651 grams per milliliter. Find the molality, the molarity, and the mole fraction. All right, on this problem, since we've got to find three different concentration units, we might as well just fill out the 3, 2, 1 table because we're gonna need every number in this table anyway. 
the data that we're given to work with is that we have an 8 mass percent solution. Because we're given mass percent, the denominator of mass percent is the mass of the entire solution, and it's a percent. So let's assume that we are working with 100 grams of solution. So I can go ahead and fill out the bottom row of masses in this table. We have 100 grams of the solution. All right, here's why picking 100 is the good number with percentages. If we have an 8 mass percent ammonia solution, that means that for every 100 grams of solution, 8 of those grams are ammonia. So we have 8 grams of ammonia. So if we have 100 grams of solution and 8 grams are ammonia, 100 minus 8 is 92. That leaves 92 grams we have to account for. Well, that's the grams of the solvent. And the key here is that the solvent is water because water uh, is what's meant by aqueous, right? When your solution is aqueous, the solvent is water. Well, now that I have all of this information, it's pretty straightforward to get moles. All I have to do is take the grams of ammonia or the grams of water and divide by the molar mass, right? So if we take 8 grams of ammonia and I divide that by 17, which is the molar mass, actually I think it's something like 17.04, but I'm just going to round it to 17. So 8 divided by 17, that gives us a little under half of a mole of ammonia, point. 4706 moles of ammonia. And yeah, I'm playing fast and loose with sig figs here. Our 8 mass percent has 3 sig figs, so I'm just going to ignore sig fig rules and in the end round to 3 sig figs. Along the way, I'm going to try to keep at least three, if not more, sig figs. Um, it always, it, it never hurts to carry extras, but sometimes you run into problems if you drop sig figs along the way. All right, so to convert grams of water to moles, I'm going to divide that by the molar mass of water, which is 18. So I'm going to take 92 divided by 18, and that's going to give me 5.111 moles of water. So far, so good. The only number we have left for this table is the volume of the solution, and we're going to get there from the density. Remember, density will be the mass of the solution divided by the volume of the solution. I have the mass of the solution, it's 100 grams, so I just have to solve the density equation for volume. I'm going to actually do this one as a dimensional analysis, so there, there's so many different ways you can, you can approach this. You can go back to the equation density equals mass over volume and solve there. Um, I'm going to say we've got 100 grams of the solution, and based on the density for every 0.9 six, five, one grams of the solution, I have one milliliter of the solution. And so that's going to give me 100 divided by 0.96, whoops, 0.9651 is 103.6 milliliters. I'm going to plug that in for the volume of the solution. Now that I have all these numbers, I can go to town with these calculations. The molality is defined as the moles of solute over kilograms of solvent. So looking up here into my table, for moles of solute, that would be moles of ammonia, so that's 0.4 seven zero six moles and for the kilograms of solvent that would be well let's see I've got 92 grams of water if I move the decimal three times to get kilograms I'll have 0 0.092 kilograms of water 
And if I run that through my calculator, 0 0.4706 divided by 0 0.092, that's going to give me 5.12 molal for the molality of the solution. Now let me switch colors to do the next calculation. I'm going to go with green. We'll use green to calculate molarity. Um, molar molarity is going to be moles of solute, so the moles of ammonia, divided by liters of solution. So that's going to be equal to, let's see, the moles of solute were 0 0.4706 and the liters of solution. Well, I've got 103.6. Let's move the don't understand what I do that starts that, but let me see if I can get rid of those scribbles. Ah, very good. Um, and pen. All right. So for liters of solution, I've got to move the decimal three times, and I'm going to have 0 0.10306. Let me run that through my calculator. 0 0.4706 divided by 0 0.10306. Oh, whoops, I thought I have an extra zero in there. Uh, sorry, let me do a little bit more erasing. Yeah. And here we go. That denominator should be 0.1036. Okay, now let's run that through the calculator. 0 0.4706 divided by 0.1036. 1036, that gives me a molarity of the solution of 4.54 molar. And the last thing we're asked to calculate is the mole fraction. I'm going to do that one in red. And to find the mole fraction, we're going to take the moles of solute divided by the total moles because this is a fraction instead of a percent, we do not multiply by 100. So the moles of the solute, that's the moles of ammonia, so 0 0.4706. And then the total moles will be 0 0.4706 plus the moles of water, which are 5.111. Let's see. Just to make sure I'm following order of operations on my calculator correctly, I will go ahead and calculate that denominator, which will be, let's see, 0 0.4706 plus 5.111. That's giving me, down there in the denominator, 5.5816. Five so now I'm going to take 0 0.4706 and divide it by 5.5816 and that's going to give me a mole fraction of 0 0.0843 and mole fraction does not have units associated with it. Let me just double check that in my calculator here real quick. All right, that looks good. Our objective for this video was to work through an example problem of these uh, concentration conversions. Sometimes the, the path from start to finish is real obvious and you don't need to worry about that 3 two, one table. But if you ever get stuck, just do three masses, two moles, and one volume. Once you have all of those numbers filled in, you can calculate any of these um, concentration units that you'll need to find. The tricks, the things to really watch out for on here to ensure your success are paying close attention to your units. Is it grams? Is it kilograms? Is it moles? Is it liters? And also paying attention to, is it solute? solvent or the entire solution. Keep track of those things and these problems will just uh, turn right out for you.